I am Levy Roseman, is an international master and streaming celebrity. Do you have what it takes to defeat Gotham Chess? I don't know if I have what it takes, but I'm sure gonna try. I'm gonna try my best to defeat my co-host, Levy. <laughs> He's telling me, I have some time between streams. Let's get this over with. What? You're so impatient, Levy. Um, okay, E4. Play the Karakan if you dare. He's not playing his favorite opening. His favorite opening is the Karakan defense. This is this is a fake Gotham chest now. <laughs> I also have my bot playing other openings too because it is based on different opening repertoires too. Because we have played many different openings during our careers. Um, but yeah, Levy is a big fan of the Karakan defense. It's the second best opening after the French defense. This is an e4, e5 position where I'm gonna choose the Rui Lopez. This is called a Spanish opening, placing the bishop here. And I'm gonna retreat or retreat. I'm gonna retreat. I'm gonna play the main line for now, the main line. Lev is a little insecure, so be careful, okay? <laughs> I'm gonna be very careful. Now after d6, this pawn is guarded again. Uh, it was already protected by the knight, but he played b5 in order to chase my bishop away, not let me take and what make the pawn vulnerable. So d6 is helping the pawn get more protection, but also opens up the diagonal for the bishop. The bishop is ready to go to e6 to g4 anywhere on that diagonal if he wants to, but he still hasn't castled. Uh, I think he will cast off very shortly though. Normally you don't want to have your king in the middle of the board. I'm gonna play this move and see how he reacts because offering this bishop trade... Okay, let's really get started. We already have gotten started. What's wrong with you? <laughs> Levy. I'm taking back with the pawn. So after the bishop trade, I'm doubling my pawns and... Um, I was listening to Hikaru teaching Bjergsen, TSM Bjergsen. Um, Bjergsen's level, by the way, is impressive. I didn't know he's that good at chess. For someone who is a beginner and never really taken lessons, he's pretty strong. Um, check out the lessons with G on the GM Hikaru channel. But Hikaru was saying to Bjergsen that you shouldn't really double pawns on a beginner level um, because it normally is a weakness on a beginner level. But when you have played chess for quite a while, you start appreciating the pros and cons. So the disadvantage is that they are stacked. The pawns are standing in front of each other instead of being next to each other. It's a, a structural weakness, but it's giving a semi-open fight to my rook. So my rook is more active with the pawn not being in front of it. It now has more activity. It has a potential to attack over the F file. So it has its pros and cons. That's why I played that move. But if you are worried about if you are worried about doubled pawns, then don't do it. It's just something that you may or may not like. Overall, it can it can backfire. Maybe in this game, I'm gonna regret that decision. But for now, I'm fine. For now, I'm fine. He's attacking my bishop. He wants to take it, possibly. Uh, that's fine. I'm giving you my bishop, Levy. I don't care about the bishop, but now I do care about how to proceed. I'm thinking the queen could come here to connect the rooks, or. I'm also looking at this idea, queen to e1 and then queen to g3, start disturbing his king a little bit. I'm not really known as an attacking player. I, I like to take it slow and positional, strategic games. Um, well, I guess it's always strategic in chess, but I'm a positional player, which means that normally I take forever to win a game. I might win a game in 70 moves in a rook end game. That's my style. But I still like to scare my opponent, and it's okay to have the queen in front of your opponent's king for scaring them. Now, to scare Levy even further, I'm gonna draw my knight to a more active post. This f5 square is the one I'm looking at. He's attacking my knight, b4. Where are you going, Levy? Let's see. What does he want? He wants to expand on the queen's side. I can place my knight on a4, but it's gonna be kinda out of the game. I'm trying to play on the king's side. I'm moving my pieces toward his king so in that sense it's better to guard uh, better to to guide my knight in that direction too instead of placing it here i think h6 um i'm not sure i would have played that move but i'm gonna see what he does after knight f5 i'm threatening checkmate in one will he see it oh shit. he spotted it but yeah um bad news guys gotham chess doesn't let me give a checkmate on g7 he he realized that i wanted to how did he see checkmate in one, being an international master? 
Yeah, I expected him to blunder. No, he's a good player. He's. I think he's stronger than me when it comes to speed chess for sure. In traditional chess, um, meaning traditional time control in this case, classical time control, I mean, Hikaru said he thinks I'm better, but that's in classical time control. Let's see if I will take back with the rook or the pawn. I like both for different reasons. If I take back with the rook, I keep the f file and I'm ready to bring the other rook here too. If I take with the pawn, I get some more space. Um, I straighten my pawn structure and maybe I can expand further. Um, both for different reasons. I feel like as much as I would like to double rooks on the f file, it will not lead to too much. If he steps away with the king, my attack isn't really dangerous. So I'm gonna take back with the pawn, push e4 in the future. Well, I wanted to push e4 and he's pinning my pawn. How annoying. Levy, I wanted to push the pawn, but that's illegal now. My king would be in check. So I'm gonna step away because I'm insisting on pushing the pawn. Has the levy bot beaten the real levy? Are you guys saying Gotham just lost to his own bot? Really? Uh, it's it's not like I have lost to my own bot in like seven moves. Never happened. This is a position to resign. It's a check. My queen is in the air. I'm lost. I have a lost position after 12 moves. Goodness me if you are an annoying opponent, Anna. I already dislike her. <coughs> It'll never happen. Um, gosh, I lost so easily to my own bot. I lost very easily to my own bot the first game I played. It's on my YouTube channel. Check it out. <laughs> Check it out. The first game was terrible. I'm pushing e4 to gain more space in the center. He's stepping with his king aside. That makes sense. At the same time, I like my um, space advantage here on the king side. It's not that easy to make progress though. And I wanted to bring the queen here when I was talking about the capture on f5. His queen is guarding it, so I should forget about that idea. Um, how to proceed? I could try to expand further. If I move the queen here, that allows me to push the pawn in the future. And as I said, I'm not an attacking player. And here I am looking at these moves, trying to attack his king. <laughs> trying to attack his king. d5 is a good move. He's, he's taking more space in the center, trying to attack my pawn. Um, trying not, he is attacking my pawn. It's guarded for now with my pawn and queen. I'm guarding that pawn, but it's pressure. He he's making some annoying moves. I think this is a good move. He might take in the future to open the d file. How to proceed? I feel like g4 may be over optimistic. G4 G4 H4 G5 might be a bit too much. At the same time, I'm so tempted to do it. <laughs> I'm so tempted. It might not be the right idea if it's too slow, but I'm tempted. Hmm. What do I do? Will I take on d5 to to not let him take on e4 because the issue is if I let him capture here that pawn will be an issue and the d file I may have to either take or place my knight here I might do that I bring the knight here so I can take back with the knight on e4 queen c5 that's another strong move by black because he's attacking my c2 pawn um, and improving the queen's position at the same time he is an annoying player and I thought my bot was annoying. His, his bot is even more annoying. His bot is even more annoying. If I'm friends with Levy, yeah, I would like to deny that we are friends and that I know him. But <laughs> yeah, we are friends and we work together on the broadcast on Hikaru's channel. Um, but I'm still very motivated to crush his bot. I want to win. I want to win. <laughs> if I place the rook here to guard the pawn, he might take down the e4 pawn. And my queen has too many things to do, too many things to deal with. So I might just trade queens. Yeah, I guess so, because his queen is standing well there. I don't like it. Let's see. We're gonna trade queens. I like endgames. I like endgames a lot. I don't need my queen anymore. Huh. Yeah, at least. At least he admits it. But yeah, I, I like to trade queens. I like to play endgames. Now the question is, do I want this to be a rook endgame and take with the knight? Trade knights here. Or do I want to take back with the pawn? My worry is that of, in both cases, doesn't matter which capture first, but in both cases, what I'm afraid of is that his rook will appear on the D file and that will be difficult to counter. Maybe I'm getting into a burst endgame. As much as I like endgames, it may not be the most pleasant of endgames. Good thing about it though, 
that once we get that end game, yeah, I was I was pretty sure he takes and he brings the rook to the d file. Yeah, so this is annoying, but at least this pawn of black is a backward pawn. It's called a backward pawn because the rest of his bodies have gone further away. They are more advanced. And it means that he kind of is stuck guarding this pawn with his rook. So as active as this rook is, this pawn is some somewhat of an issue for black. Um, how can I deal with this? He's not threatening this because my rook is guarding it, nor he's threatening back rank checkmate because my other rook is guarding it. But he will probably play rook to d4, attack this pawn. I think I need to start bringing my king. You need to activate your king in end games, and also I don't want to have back rank problems. Back rank checkmate is one of the most common things, so I'm gonna guard that pawn now with the rook and then come here with my king. I need my king to help me. He's going back to d8. That's surprising, but I think the reason is after rook e2. Oh, it doesn't let me show it. Um, so once I guarded my pawn, he doesn't really have a way forward. He can't put even more pressure on this pawn. There's no other piece that can attack it. And as I said, he cannot move the other rook away. Ideally, you would want to double stack. You would want to have both rooks on the open file. Rooks love open files and open ranks. So if you double down on that file, that normally is great. But he cannot do it because I'm gonna capture his pawn. And that's why eventually he went back to d8. But that's no progress for him and I can keep making progress by bringing the king, making it active. g6. Hmm. In theory he could, he could push his a pawn. Yeah, but I'm gonna capture it. So I called it a backward pawn because theoretically you can capture it. Um, but I'm gonna take it. I have two pieces guarding that square, that's true. G6, I need to decide how to react, if to react. So he might want to take here, but if he does end up trading, that exposes his E pawn. Um, it will be a pass pawn for him and he can guard it with the F6 pawn, but is that good or bad for him if I activate my king? King E3 I'm looking at. So I can decide whether to allow this capture or to take, or to guard it with my G pawn and take back on F5 with the G pawn. That's another thing I can try to do. So let's see. Yeah, before moving the king, it was a threat that he could move the rook because I had back rank issues. That's true. That's true. I didn't realize that's what you guys were talking about. So g4, g4, capture, or just ignore. Those are the three moves, the three options I'm looking at. Do I want him to take or do I not want him to take? He's trying to, he's pushing because he wants his king closer. So I think he may end up taking back with the king if I capture. That's my least favorite. I don't want his king to be active, so I either will end up pushing this or making a king move because I want his king to be passive at the edge of the board. I don't want to push because that would lose my pawn, so those of you who asked me about f6, it's an option but unfortunately not a good one because black can play rook d6 and capture my pawn next move, so that's not ideal. Will I just let him take it? I could. Let's do that. I like g4 too, but I ended up choosing this because I feel like after the trade... Yeah, he has a pass bomb, but... Um, oh, now he's bringing the king here. That makes sense. That makes sense. If I play king e4... I'm not really threatening to capture the pawn because he will have this check, so that's not that good of a move. Um, so king e4 is not a good move, what I think could be a good move is to trade rooks either now or later. I'm thinking whether to push g4 or not, but overall I will want to trade rooks on the d file because if he has to take back with the rook, I'm gonna win the pawn. So I wanna get rid of this rook, that's his active rook. I want him to have this passive one in the corner. Rook d2 now or, or, or later, but overall I will want to trade rooks, that's for sure. I'm not sure if maybe I had to push g4 and take back with the g pawn. I feel like my structure was more solid, um, more more stable too with the pawn on e4. So I may I may have had to go for g4 and take back with the pawn. But now it's too late. You you can't take back moves. Um, I don't think it's that big of a problem. But I'm looking at rook d2 takes takes king f6 g4 king g5. His king will suddenly be very active. 
Mm, and that's something I didn't expect. Well, I'm gonna go for it, uh, but I might have I might have made um, the wrong decision when it was about the capture on f5. Um, because now his king is becoming super active. G4, king, g5, or if I defend with the rook, then my rook is passive. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna defend for the uh, for the moment with the pawn. King g5, I'm expecting enough to h3. He probably will end up going all the way to g3. This is really passive now, suddenly for me. Definitely not a good turn of events. And my worry is that if I if I end up defending with the rook and I will have to eventually, then he can activate his rook. Bring it all the way here. I think I messed it up. <laughs> I think I messed it up, honestly. But I'm gonna make him go all the way to um, h4. Oh, he doesn't. Okay, he's stopping my pawn. I was like, at least it takes him time to crawl all the way to h4 and h3. Um, but yeah, I think I this is not ideal anymore. But I'm not gonna give up. I, I think there's still a chance. I think there's still a chance. Um, if I place the king... I can go this way with the king. I can go this way with the king. Let's see. I would love to go this way to try to capture his pawns. Will I make it? King d3. King h3 to threaten my pawn and that's when I will have to guard it with the rook but king g3 and threatening king g2 is pretty annoying I'm gonna end up losing some pawns there yeah I think I'm gonna have to try to activate my king I wish I had the time to come here and, and avoid all this but no my king is too far after the trade on d2 my king is too far perhaps rook d2 was the uh, was the part um, perhaps rook d2 was the mistake because my king was drawn too far so i think that that was the issue one thing was to take back with the pawn that was probably not well evaluated by me but to combine it with the rook trade on d2 was a, a mistake now the question is how bad is my position do i still have a chance to hold it if i play those moves king g3 looking not really fine not really fine at the same time, if my king is not far... Wait a second. If my king... I'm just thinking. There are checkmate patterns. Okay. This this looks bad. This looks bad. But there are also tricks if his king is on the edge of the board. So if I play king e3, king h4, I can draw my king here. And he can't take the pawn because that would be a checkmate. So as bad as it looks, as bad as it looks, I think by placing the king here... He now cannot take the pawn. If I place the king here, king takes h3, runs into checkmate. And after king f3, he may try a move like e4 check, but that gives me at least a pawn. And my rook is still here attacking his pawn. I think I survived. I think perhaps f6 was slow because now my king made it to f3. It, this is still an active king, but he's not threatening to take the pawn. That's always checkmate. He cannot take the pawn. But I also can't really improve my position. I also can't really improve because if I go away with the king, then he will take the pawn. So I have a kind of a defense here, but I can't make progress. Unless there's something on the queen side. You guys are asking if I can push. If I push, I think he will take. And then he will switch over to the b5, I think, to attack my pawn. So we could trade these pawns, but once his rook gets active, then it's game over. I cannot let his rook be activated because my one thing here that's going for me is that for now his rook is passive he also may end up giving up the a pawn honestly he could because once i take then he will capture my pawn but then i come back to a1 and threaten checkmate this is an interesting position but i feel like there's no way forward because i can't push c3 i could take the d5 um that's the one and only open fight, true. And threaten rook d6. I do like that. So I I leave the attack over the a5 pawn. But I do get the d5. Let's go for that. That's some kind of progress. Even if this may not be too much. Because my pawn on h3 will be hanging. He plays rook to f7. So that one of the pawns is guarded. If I play rook d6... He will then take my h3 pawn. I can take on c6. That's still good for me, I think. 
I think this is good for me. I think, I think we are now with some winning chances or am I getting overconfident? Am I getting overconfident uh, or are we still with some winning chances here? Um, okay, he pushes, so now he's threatening to take the pawn. I could just ignore that and attack his pawns. Rook c6, rook d5. If rook d5, he can guard the pawn with rook c7. And I go back to d6, he goes back to f7. Um, then we laugh. <laughs> no. <laughs> Wait, if I play rook c6, and he cannot guard the pawn with the rook, what he could do is to place... No, he doesn't have time to play rook d7, because I'm gonna take this pawn. This pawn is more important. I think rook c6 is a good move. But after rook c6, I need to take into account that he will have time to take my pawn. Then I take his pawn, and I'm threatening this pawn. I think that's still good for me. I'm gonna go for this pawn. King g3, Levy won't notice it if I place my king next to his. <laughs> sure, <laughs> sure thing. I was expecting that now he will go for the g-pawn, but I can go back and attack this, or am I not in time? Rook c6, rook takes g4, rook takes f6, and then I'm guarding this pawn and I'm attacking this one. It could still lead to a draw, but I think I need the f6 pawn, I need to take this. I'll take the pawn and that guards my pawn, so if he gives this check, I'm gonna move away. If he pushes, we both have pass pawns now. He has two pass pawns, I have one. Um, but also his king is on the edge of the board. If rook h6... Oh no, the issue is if rook h6, he then gives a check and captures his pawn and that will guard his pawn. Rook h6 is a bad move here. I'm gonna have to move the rook in a way that it still guards this pawn. I'm gonna have to move here and then push. This is... <laughs> Watch yourself over there! Okay, I mean, I'm in a check. I, I agree, I should watch out for checks but the pawn is fine then I'm gonna push he's attacking my pawn and he's ready to push his past pawn I'm gonna push king f5 I did not expect that I thought he was gonna start pushing okay so what do we have here he's got these two past pawns I've got this one my one is more advanced but the problem is if I push f7 he will then use the king to attack my pawn that's why he played king f5 f7 King e6 or king g6 is attacking the pawn and I don't have time to promote it. He's gonna capture it. So, if I don't push, <laughs> he still has those moves and then try to capture my pawn. He's gonna end up winning my pawn. But I can win some of his pawns in the meantime. I can try to trade it for the h5 or a5 pawns. I can push my c pawn to create another pass pawn. That is true. I think if c4, he'll take, takes, and I have a c-passed pawn. But I need to decide what am I gonna do when he attacks my pawn. So he's gonna play king e6 or king g6 next move. And I need to decide what am I doing there. Or I should play, for instance, this move to attack this, po this pawn. If he takes, I take on h5. So I think after rook h8, he's gonna push h4. But then I have f7. Wait, he doesn't have the time. He doesn't have the time to push. So this is the thing. If I play rook h8 and he pushes to guard it, I have f7 and I'm promoting next move. So rook h8, he has to take my pawn, then I'm taking his pawn. And it kind of is going toward a drawish, very drawish position. But I think it's the best move. King g6. Um, <laughs> I missed. <laughs> King g6 is a great move because it guards the pawn and he's threatening to take with the rook. Levy wants to win. Just when I thought this was gonna be um, a draw because we were gonna trade the pawns and it's a rook end game with not much material. He plays king g6 and he's threatening to win the game by capturing the pawn with the rook. He's taking my pawn next move. Doesn't matter if I push it, doesn't matter if I guard it with the rook. What I can do though, what I can do though... Um, is to not attack another pawn. I can go for this one or this one. The problem with rook e8, problem with rook e8 is that he'll take on f6 with the king and guard the pawn. And if I give a check, he'll take, he'll go king g5 and everything is protected. So I kind of need to play rook a8. Um, he'll end up taking the pawn. Then I take here. 
and he still has those two pass pawns. Pretty annoying position. Oh, I messed it up. Um, I messed it up. Uh, the pawn was gonna be lost. My f pawn was gonna be lost, but um, is there still a chance to save this? Is there still a chance to save it? Let's see. I'm thinking that maybe what I should do, maybe what I should do is to wait for him to take the pawn. He can't take with the king because I take this one. And if he takes with the rook, I will have a chance to move my king up and attack this pawn. And only then I will go for the a pawn. Maybe that's what I should do. Let's play c4 now. And if we end up take if we end up trading. Um, I have a C pass pawn. I'm losing this pawn. He's not taking just yet because if he were to take, I would have activated my king. So it's something. It's something. H4. That means um, that now he can't take with the rook because the pawn will be gone. He wants to take with the king. He wants to capture with the king. So that is his threat, to capture with the king, and unfortunately, since he has pushed the h pawn, I don't really have the luxury to go away with the rook, capture this pawn, and then come back. This pass pawn is pretty fast. If rook a8, h3, rook takes, h2, rook back, um, kind of in time, I, am I not? Wait a second, I might, I might, might be just in time, it's a very passive position though. So, um, this is one of the options take h2 rook back um, and I'm just stopping the pawn in time he can play rook h4 and then I have to go rook h1 which is very passive but at least I have these two pawns here um, or the other option is to push now I can push well b4 takes everything but then I have f7, um, no I don't have, he'll take it with the king. I was thinking maybe I can simplify, but no, it doesn't lead anywhere. C4, um, C4 king takes, C5. Does that lead anywhere? He will have rook b4 then and attack this pawn. I don't think I can, I don't think I can do that. It looks pretty bad. <laughs> it looks pretty bad. Let's see. Can we survive? Can we survive somehow? So I either push or I go for the pawn. I need to choose one of the uh, one or the other. Rook trade definitely doesn't help me. So if I guard the pawn and trade, that's a king and pawn in game where I'm a pawn down. No, that's not good. I think. I'm gonna try to go for this pawn. It still may be bad, but I feel like if I eliminate this one, he takes this first, he doesn't push just yet. Um, so rook trades are not something I want because that king and pawn game is bad. Although, no, it's still bad. I was like, his king may be a bit too far, but no, it's not true. So I'm gonna take this pawn now. He does have two pass pawns, but me too. My ones are not as advanced, that's the only issue. My pawns are not very advanced. But I'm gonna come back with the rook and not let him push further, at least for now. I'm gonna have to stop that, the, the pawn for sure, I'm gonna have to stop it. I'm stopping on this square, the rook, and I'm gonna block it. Either block it or bring the king, but bring the king is not enough, because h2, next move is queen, so I have to stop it. I have to block the pawn physically with my rook. And now he wants to bring the king here to get rid of my blockade. I could try to stop the king by placing my king in front, but then he will give, he will give a check. Um, although then I have king g3, so that check is not really good for him. I like this move um, for survival. <laughs> I like it. I will have to start pushing these, but for now I'm focusing on stopping his, because his pawn is more advanced. So king g3 now. I could play king g3 to attack his pawn, but that will let him activate his king and then attack my pawns. And that king and pawn and game could still be bad. Wait, what is, what is it? Let's see. Only 7.8 to go in terms of followers? Seriously? 
Goodness me, that's a lot of new followers. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot. We need to hit 100,000 by the 1st of January and there's almost no time left. So I'm stressing out. I'm very stressed. But it's Hikaru's goal for my channel to hit 100k by the 1st of January. And it's still pretty far, but we are approaching it. Thank you so much, everybody, for supporting the channel. It means a lot. It means a lot to me. Okay, apart from that, though, Anna, focus, focus, focus. Um, I don't think he will trade rooks. I was just thinking king g3, king e4. Oh, but if I take and he doesn't trade, then I have a tempo to use and guard my pawn. So that could be the solution. King g3 attacks the, the pawn. He plays king e4. Uh, I'll take, if we trade, if we trade um, king d3 then, he has all the path of the pass pawn paved. But then I can start pushing my pawn to... He will promote first though. He'll promote first. That could be just a draw. It could be just a draw. If I play this move to attack the pawn, which is one of the most logical moves here, uh, he will play king to e4, I think. He could also push the pawn. Maybe that's what he wants, but that's not enough. If he pushes the pawn, the rook trade would not give him the win because then I have enough time to come back. I think what he will do, king g3, king e4. If I take the pawn, he could trade the rooks and then place his king. Oh, <gasps> he could place his king on f3. Then I push. We all push. He will promote first and he will give checkmate at the end on h1. How many of you can see this? How many of you can see that king and pawn? And if I play this move, I think this is good for him because if we trade. I'm a pawn up in that king and pawn and game, but with the king, the black king on f3, my king on h3. Can you imagine the two kings there? Black king on f3, white king on h3. Um, I will push, but he will promote first. So he's the one to get a queen first. And once he gets a queen, his queen is here, my queen is there. It's checkmate on h1 with the kings in front of each other. Can you see that? How many of you can visualize that? How many of you can see that happening? That I don't want. No, 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 no way. Levy, I'm not giving you that chance. I'm gonna push my pawns, I guess. Will I? Um, maybe what he wants is to bring the rook over once I push to then when I take, he takes here. Is that what he wants? I'm gonna push b4 because that's further away from his king. e4 check. Um, so if now I come here, then e3 I can still take. I think that's what I should do. E3 now, but... <gasps> oh no! I thought... I thought I can take, but no, the <laughs> king is far. <laughs> okay, wait a second. Don't panic, Anna. Don't panic. Maybe it's still not too bad. So I can't take because my king will be far. Um, he promotes. But I can come back with the king. Before I panic, before I panic, I can move the king here. And then it stops the e-pawn. If he guards it with his rook, I can decide to block it with my rook or take, but then he pushes. Well, I have to come here. I have to. I have to stop the e-pawn. E2? Wait, am I missing something? Uh, I thought he was gonna use the rook to guard the pawn, but now e2 means I can take this pawn. Um, if I take with the rook, he has a free roll all the way to the promotion square but if i take with the king that wins the pawn i think what he wants i don't think it's a blunder i think what he wants i don't think it's a blunder is it i was like maybe what he wants it's a sacrifice so that if i take king g4 king g3 but it could be a mini blunder in a way that i think this hopefully is slow enough king g4 he's very active but i can stop him from going to g3 if i play king f2 then he will give a check Possibly and I'm gonna be very very passive, but at least I'm guarding that promotion square with all I have um, It's looking terrifying. It's looking scary But I think that's still fine. The other option the other option is that I let him go all the way um, To support the pawn with his king because I can focus on my pawns. I could push my pawn so I either come here and defend passively or I could just push my pawn, if c4, king g3, rook to h1, king g2, move the rook away, and he will push, 
I'm gonna push. He'll push. I'm gonna give up my rook for the pawn, but then my pawns are already on b5 and c5. I think pushing the pawn is good. Will I push c4 or will I push b5? Those, those are some of the questions to answer here. Normally it's better when they go together. Um, but this is a very concrete position. It's a very concrete position. Um, b5 here, here the rook moves away, push, b6. My pawn is alone is not enough, um, but supported by the king. I could push b5 and then go with my king too, or the two pawns. Mm. Of course he's faster. I'm gonna have to give up my rook for his pawn if I don't go here. So king f2 is a more solid move. I think he will give a check. And then king g3 and i'm pretty passive and there will be all sorts of threats of back rank mate um but then i could play rook d2 just in time do i have winning chances still there <laughs> do i have winning chances i'm so tempted to sacrifice the rook i'm so tempted to sacrifice the rook the final critical moment. I think this is the final critical moment in the game to decide whether to give up the rook or not. This is winning, Hikaru? Yeah, <laughs> I hope so, but I don't think so. I wish I could. Rook sack, let's go. You guys want me to sacrifice the rook. Um, some of you don't want me to sacrifice the rook. <laughs> okay. I could also play rook h1, that's true, because then king g3, check. He'll have to move the... Uh, the king in front of the pawn, but if rook h1, I think he will push first h2. That's an issue. Um, which one will I go for? I'm pretty sure he's not losing. If I go for passive defense, I don't think he will lose. Um, I think that's just a very passive defensive position for me, which I should survive, but I don't have winning chances. Do I have winning chances if I give up the rook? Maybe. <laughs> Do I? I don't know. I guess not. Um... Let's let's calculate a little bit. Before I give up the rook, let's calculate a bit. Let's say c4, king g3, rook here, king g2, rook moves away, um, h2, push, h1. I think he will take that. I'll take it. I give up my rook. He takes it with the rook. I push b5. Um, if he attacks my pawn, any of them, I push. If he attacks the other one, I push. So I don't think he's time to attack them. But maybe his king is close enough. Is it close enough? Push. And he brings his king. Oh man, it's a long line. I'm drawing arrows to, to show it to you guys, by the way. That was a question in one of my YouTube videos that, oh, isn't it like cheating that you are drawing arrows? It doesn't help me to draw arrows. If anything, it makes me more confused because I'm used to over the board chess and in over the board chess, you don't have a perma marker and drawing on the board. So for me, it's not natural to draw arrows. I'm drawing arrows simply to help you guys understand the lines. For me, it's a lot easier to, to picture the position in my head instead of drawing on the board. So like my calculation would be like this. If anything, I would look away, close my eyes, uh, but not draw anything. It doesn't help me. If anything, it's, it's pretty confusing, but I think for explanation reasons, it's better to draw so that you see what I'm thinking. Even if it's a very complex line to understand, very difficult one. Give up the rook, push the pawn, and he will try to go back with the king. B6, stops the pawn, bring the king, his king is too close. I think his king is too close. You know what, you convinced me that we have to go for the passive defense. <laughs> But I'll show you after the board. I will show you after the game. I will show you on an on a separate analysis board what I was calculating because it was very long and very messy, very messy. I do prefer to talk to you guys and read the chat, but I, I feel like I need to focus. If I want to play this game well, I have to look at the board more than the chat. So this is the case. I'm a pawn up, but his pieces are very active. His king is a lot better than mine. And he's threatening to move the rook over and back rank checkmate. Levy wants to move the rook over to a square that's further away from my king because then he would be threatening checkmate, back rank checkmate. I think it's time for me to move the rook away. Rook to d2. I think is the right move. I need to activate my rook to be able to give a check and push his king away. So I'm gonna bring the rook here. I could support my pawn from here, but that's too passive right now because I don't have that square. Ideally, I could do that, but for now it's priority for me to try to push that king away before it's too late. Before it's too late. 
Stupid Chuck, thank you so much for the donation. Focus, Anna. How do I focus if you guys are this supportive? How do I focus if you guys are this supportive? Goodness me. Thank you. Uh, I cannot focus. I cannot focus. <laughs> oh, he plays rook to f3 so that he prevents the check. But that means he's not threatening the checkmate, at least. He's not threatening checkmate. He will threaten checkmate, though, if I push the pawn. He will come here to threaten checkmate. Uh-oh, have I messed it up? No, I don't think I messed it up. Have I? <laughs> if I push, that's when he will use the rook to threaten checkmate and threaten my pawns. And if I now bring the rook here, then he has rook to d3. Maybe I did mess it up. Maybe I had to place the rook behind the pawn. Um, if I push my pawn, he will take this and threaten checkmate. Um, good thing though. Before I panic, <laughs> and I'm overwhelmed by all the support, thank you guys, thanks a lot. Before I panic, this is, um, this position. Just a moment, a couple of things to take care of. Now, uh, in this position, so this is a passive move, and it will let led uh, it will lead to rook d3, threatening back rank checkmate, and all that stuff. Um, but it's still not too bad. The good thing for me, good thing for me in this position, as strange as it is, is that because he he has an h pass pawn, I can defend um, with what's called a a back rank defense. I can have my king on the back rank and my rook on the back rank, and it will and it will still be fine. It will still be a fine position. Um, because with the H, pa H pass pawn, he doesn't have enough space to go over to the other side. There's so much I'll need to show you on an analysis on a separate analysis board, but this is a bit too much uh, <laughs> to show with only arrows. The main idea is that I can have my pieces looking really passive, and it will still be all right. It will still be all right. So if the king goes here, uh, the rook. <laughs> I'm being so overwhelmed with all the support. Thank you guys. Honestly, I I don't know what we are doing on a level 5. 227% uh, hype train. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm gonna give a shout out to each and every one of you, but I want to finish the game first. So I will possibly end up protecting the pawn. Maybe I should have placed the rook there initially and not here. Um, I lost the tempo there. I lost one move. After rook d3, I can place the rook here and still guard my pawn. And uh, with the back rank defense, it's it's at least a joy. It, um, I can hopefully in the future push my pawns, but for now I need to be passive. I need to go for this passive defense, guard the pawn, and then drop it back. Before I get back rank checkmate, I need to drop the rook back. He's super active. His rook is more active, his king is more active, but he cannot promote the pawn because it's an age pawn, and my king in the corner will be blocking it. So the main thing about this defense is that I can just... If the pawn is pushed, I'm gonna put my king right in front of the pawn in the corner and no one can move my king. There's no way he can move my king because the rook is guarding the back rank. So it looks super passive, but at the same time it works. And now, now, ladies and gentlemen, we can finally push the pawns. We can finally push the pawns. We can push either b5 or c4. Um, one or the other, the two pawns should be supporting each other overall. Push the juicers indeed! Push the juicers! I'm gonna go for this juicer and if he attacks my b-pawn, I'm gonna push b5. Finally we can push. Push him, baby! Finally! Watch yourself over there. Why? I'm gonna move the king here and not let you, not let you get here. There's 10,000 of you watching me trying to beat Gotham Chess, are you kidding? 10,000 of you? I think he's gonna make a draw. The problem is, as excited as we got about the position, because now I'm about to... If he lets me push the pawn, if he lets me keep pushing, I'm winning. The problem is, Levy is forcing a draw. There's 10,000 of you watching me fail to beat Gotham Chess! He got away with it! He got away with it because I have to keep going back into the corner with my king. And he keeps giving checks. I, I cannot hide. And I, 
I cannot go. I'm happy with the draw from that position. Would you like to play again? I will play again in the future, Levy. But for now, we need to analyze what happened. Of course, he's happy with the draw. We were almost. <laughs> no, it was still far. His pieces were very active and that compensates for the lack of the pawn. The reason why this is a draw, I cannot go in the other direction. I cannot move the king here. Let's open a separate analysis board and sh I'll show you guys everything that I was calculating because it was very complex. I cannot keep the game going here because if I move the king this direction, uh, he now has a chance. Wait a second, can I? No, h2 check that wins the rook and then the game. But instead of h2, I was thinking he now has a chance to move the king here and threaten this check. Maybe I could have tried, but it looks fishy because he will be giving now this rook g1 check. He's, he's threatening to win my rook. In order to save the rook, I'm gonna have to move away, but then he will give, be giving lots of checks again. This, unfortunately, there's not a way I could escape from the checks because if I move to the third rank, he's now winning the rook. And if I move closer with the king, um, after this check, he still is winning because this rook trade is bad for me. I'm an extra pawn, I have an extra pawn, but his passed pawn is faster. So if I try to win, I'll end up losing eventually. I cannot step out of these checks, whether from the, the ranks or from the files. In the game it was the G and H files he's giving checks on. That's where we repeated most. But if I go this way, if I go this way again, these checks are the ones that are making a draw for him or black can win. I don't have a winning chance here, unfortunately, because my pawn is too slow. I can't just push it because he's going to end up winning my rook and the rook is catching my pawn. So unfortunately, all of these attempts are fail. And as I said, rook c3 leads to the same. I have to stay with my king on the first and second rank. If I move over to the third rank, he is trading my rook or winning, winning or trading the rook, depending on where the king is and then he's pushing his pawn faster than I do. So unfortunately, 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 there was no way to win it. Could I have won if I moved the rook immediately to c2? That was a that was a suggestion by you guys here to move the rook to c2. But then I think he will just come here instantly instead of rook f3 because now I'm not threatening a check. Rook a8 to threaten a back rank checkmate and after rook c1, rook a2 is the same, is the same draw. It was gonna be the same position. Uh, whether rook a8 or rook d8, it leads to the very same. With such active pieces, it's normal that he has at least a draw. It It is the same pattern, the same idea. What I was trying to do earlier in my calculation was to give up the rook, remember? I was so tempted to give up the rook, to not stop him from playing king g3, but to push. King g3 moves the rook, attacks the rook, the rook goes away, he pushes the pawn, then I push one of the pawns, and he promotes. I take it, and now he takes... Wait, he has a better move? Okay, the, the computer is saying all sorts of different lines that I probably missed, but this is what I calculated. I'm just trying to show you what I calculated. If I push, he's gonna go and um, get behind the pawn so that I cannot push this, and I can't push this because he'll take it. So now he's gonna try to bring the king. Oh, but now this is winning, because I get there. No, I don't. <laughs> I have to play king d2. These are so difficult, these positions. Wait, what am I missing? How is white winning here? I don't get it. Show lines. King e3. Oh, I'm approaching my pawns, but at the same time keeping his king away. That's so instructive. But it's, it should not be winning. I think here he has... Ooh, this move. This move to cut the king. Or what's easier to understand is to attack the pawn. Because if I push, it takes this pawn. If I push this one, he'll take that pawn. So I'm losing one of the pawns. And then he will end up giving up the rook for the remaining pawn. But it's saying that there's something better for black earlier. Where's where's the moment where he's something better? Or is it all always a draw? Now it says zero, zero, zero always. It was a draw the whole time. <laughs> Every line is a draw. As we learned it today on the broadcast. 
of Air Things Masters, every line, every game is a draw. No, not true. It, this was an exciting game. I thought we had chances. I thought we both had chances. But this endgame was gonna be a draw, whether I gave up the rook or not, it was gonna end in a draw. Earlier, I felt like he has a better position here, I thought. There's more pressure on me. But he couldn't improve the position. I'm getting my king here, not there. Here. How about... Um, how about this position? This is, this is the mistake. Yeah, here I thought... I made the wrong decision, I made the wrong call um, by allowing the capture like this and then playing rook d2. This was the wrong combination of moves. Because now the king is too far and this is how he activated his king. This is where he took the initiative. It's still not too bad. It's still not too bad. But now I'm trying to make a draw. Earlier I was trying to get a better position. Uh, so here I made the wrong decision. I think this is the mistake I made to move the king instead of either taking or pushing g4. g4, not g3, but g4, I think is what I should have gone for. And if he takes, I take back with the g-pawn and keep my structure very solid. Yeah, it still is a draw. <laughs> it's just a 0, 0, 0 all the time. But this was better. I should have played this. Anything earlier? Thank you, Rocket, for the subscription. Thanks a lot for that. Anything earlier? Hmm. Yeah, he's in a better position, but it wasn't so simple for Black to improve. I didn't like this part of the game. Yeah, I felt like this is these were strong moves, I thought. At the same time, the engine saying Queen D4 was even better to place the Queen here and attack this pawn. So even Levy makes mistakes. Even Levy makes inaccurate moves. Overall, I think the game was exciting. It ended in a draw, but it was it was a complex position. Even the end game was really difficult to judge whether to give up the rook, when to run with the pawns. It was instructive. I hope you guys found it instructive too. Let me know. Let me know what you thought of the game. Thank you so much for watching. This was streamed live on my Twitch channel where I stream full time, five days a week. Do catch us live next time or follow the highlights and the votes here on my YouTube channel. In either case, I really appreciate your support. Thank you so much again and bye for now. Until the next time.